Hey, Dragonflies, it's time for another lesson with Mr. Madsen. Today, we're going to do second step and Are You Among Us? All right, quick review. So, last time, we talked about being detectives. I don't mean detectives that solve crimes, but more like social, emotional detectives. These are detectives who look for clues as to how people are feeling and what's going on around them, okay? So not only do we uh, think about and listen to what people are saying, but we look at their body language and their faces to determine does what they're saying match up with how we think they're feeling, okay? And if they don't match up, um, then we have to think about what's really going on here. Also using ourselves as a guide, thinking, if I was in that situation, how would I be feeling? What would I be doing? Okay? And this is a way that we can help understand better the relationships that we have with people. So, problems. Problems cause feelings. No two ways about it. They're just, they just cause feelings, okay? You could be mad. You could be sad scared, embarrassed, nervous or worried, or a whole combination of feelings which would be confusing or confused. So generally though, when we have a problem, we feel what we call our hard feelings or uncomfortable feelings. I, I don't think I've ever met anyone that's been happy that they were facing a problem. Okay. Also, our feelings are just our body's reaction to the things that happen to us. Okay. It's just how our body reacts. Much like, uh, think about the weather. One minute it might be sunny, and then wait 15 minutes, and it might be rainy. Okay. So you might be happy. Something happens 15 minutes later, then you're sad. Wait another 15 minutes, maybe you're feeling a different feeling. Okay, our feelings can be like the weather, and it's just a reaction to what's happening around us, and it's really important for us to understand that. Okay, let's talk about our brains. And you know, previously when we talked about our brains, we've talked about three main parts. Now, our brains are very complex, and so we only focus on these three parts. Okay, the first part is the prefrontal cortex or the PFC. The second part, the amygdala, or the security guard. And the third part is the hippocampus, or the library. Okay, so PFC, security guard, and library. Okay, specifically, the prefrontal cortex is a special part of our brain. Okay, and it's the learning part. Okay, it's the part where it helps us to solve problems, pay attention, and make good choices. It's really our best part of us, okay? However, the amygdala is also an important part. It is the security guard, and if it senses danger, it says, fight, protect yourself, take flight, get out of there, freeze, be a statue, maybe the danger will walk by, faint, this is kind of like falling asleep, but not great because you could be standing and you just fall asleep right away and then you, you fall and you could hit your head. It's not a great strategy. The last one is flinch. And I've talked about flinching before. Flinching is alerting our attention to what might be dangerous. Like if this door behind me got slammed, I would immediately turn and go, and I would look to see where the danger might be if there's danger, okay? So flinching is a reaction, <clears throat> excuse me, that we have that draws our attention to what might be dangerous. And the last part is the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is a special part. It's the library. It saves everything. It saves all of our memories, all of our habits. It's what the prefrontal cortex, the PFC, goes to to get information about how to solve a problem. Say you've stored Kelso in your hippocampus. 
it then would know those nine choices to solve a problem. All right, let's talk about the amygdala a little bit. It's kind of like, in Among Us, the emergency meeting, okay? It senses danger and it says, there's an emergency, we all have to meet, okay? The thing about the amygdala is, when it senses danger, it unplugs. Think of a plug-in like for a lamp or your computer even. It unplugs that part, okay? So it like unplugs our PFC so it can't function and it takes over. And remember, its, it's whole job is to keep us safe. So it's going to say it's time to fight, protect yourself, take flight, get out of there like a plane takes flight, freeze, like be a statue so that the danger would go by, faint, and flinch, okay? The amygdala is good at keeping us safe but it's not good at making decisions, okay? And that's what our PFC is really good at. So again, it uses our senses to see if it's safe or not. And what I mean by our senses are our hearing, our sight, our smell, taste, and touch. It uses our experiences to say, is this safe or not, okay? And if it's not safe, then it's gonna tell us to do one of those responses. The only way to get our PFC, our prefrontal cortex, plugged back in so that it can make that decision is to calm our amygdala. And one of the easiest ways is to just breathe. Do deep breathing. Breathe in through your nose like you're smelling a flower and breathe out through your mouth like you're blowing out candles. Simple, okay? Hold in between those two, three seconds. It's a great way to calm your body down calm your amygdala down, and plug your PFC back in. <clears throat> okay, quick review. Last time, we saw a video clip about Emily and Ryan building with clay. Okay, Their teacher, Mr. Perez, noticed that Ryan was struggling. It was his first time to use clay. He indirectly tried to send a message to Ryan. Okay. He went up and he started talking to Emily and reminding her about how, boy, a year ago, she was struggling. And that with hard work, something I call grit, stick to she worked hard, she stuck with it, she was able to start creating things that she was proud of, okay? And the teacher's trying to get Ryan to hear, hey, when you're doing something for the first time, you can't expect to do it perfectly. And... Any of you that worked with clay, you know there's some skills that you need to develop in order to create a project that's actually going to survive the process. And even when you follow those um, skills or, or rules, I guess, for attaching clay and forming clay, sometimes they still don't survive. The firing process in the kiln or the glaze that you used didn't work. It's always a chance, okay? But by, by learning those skills, you minimize the risk, okay? And that's the way it is with everything, okay? Ryan was clearly struggling, and maybe he was trying to do too much at one time. It would have been helpful if he would have asked Emily, hey, since you're good at this, can you give me an idea of what I should do and how I should do it, how I should connect clay together? He could have done that, right? So, takeaways from this. One, it's good to try new things. That's how we learn. When we, when we try new things, recognize that it's okay to not do it perfectly the first time. It's okay. It's okay not to do it perfectly any time, actually. It's okay to ask for help. Try to learn from every attempt when you try something new. Try to learn something from it that you can take away from it and be able to build on in the future. The other little video clip we saw was a was called The Play, and it was a school play where Stuart and Claire were rehearsing for their school play. Claire's younger brother, Carter, was seeking attention, and so he started to goof up and embarrass Claire, right? Claire, as you can see in this picture, was shocked, feeling all kinds of feelings, right? Her brother just wanted attention, but... 
It made her feel a ton of feelings, right? So Claire, how did Claire react to Carter's interruptions? She felt embarrassed, angry, confused, upset, and frustrated, right? She felt all those feelings all at once. Like, why is this happening? I've got this assignment that I've got to turn in and my little brother is making fun of me in front of my friends and stopping us from working on it. This, this could feel really similar to you if you've got a project that you're working on and you've got a deadline to meet. So what were the steps that Claire did to help solve this problem? First, she recognized how she was feeling and she did some deep breathing. She recognized that her amygdala was activated and she needed to calm it down in order to think through some solutions. She counted down from 10. That's one strategy in addition to deep breathing. After she was calm, <clears throat> excuse me, after she was calm, she then considered some solutions. The first one was to yell at him. And I think that's our natural response, right? Especially to a little brother, little sister, we yell at him, okay? It's not the greatest intervention. I don't think anybody likes to be yelled at. Am I right? Yeah, it doesn't feel good. And it, and it hurts the relationship, okay? And I think she recognized that, that that's not the best way to intervene. She then thought, I could go get mom and he could get in trouble. It's kind of like tattling, right? Again, it's a strategy, but it is, a, is it the best strategy, okay? She thought about leaving, you know, walk away is the Kelso choice here, or go to another game, go to another place. She thought about saying to Stuart and her friend, hey, let's go to Stuart's house and we'll practice there and Carter won't be there to bother us, okay? And the last one she came up with was just pulling Carter aside and talking to him privately. And this is the solution that she went with. And I don't know if you noticed, but this is the solution that worked the best. And it's, it's the best solution. It doesn't hurt the relationship. It builds the relationship. She let Carter know how she was feeling. She did an I message. And then he was able to respond and say, I'm sorry, I just wanted attention. I wasn't intentionally trying to get you mad or embarrass you. Okay, so that saved the relationship and actually in, in the future, Carter's gonna be more willing to listen to his sister. Whereas if she yelled at him or got him in trouble through mom, he's gonna be less likely to respect her and respect her wishes. So again, working on that relationship, focusing on that relationship, is what really helps and it helps down the road. So review, we all face problems, small and big. We have to recognize if they're small or big and deal with them appropriately. Problems cause us to have strong feelings, okay? And we all need ways to calm down when feeling those feelings, okay? Some simple ways are deep breathing, taking a walk, counting to 10 or counting down from 10. After we um, calm ourselves down, then we look for connections like how did this happen? What's going on? And that's when we can think of solutions. After we come up with some solutions, and I know this seems like a lot, but it's really not. Ask yourself, is this solution safe? How will this solution make me and other people feel? Is this solution fair? Will this solution work? After thinking about those questions with your solutions, then you can, you're can you ready to make a choice about what to do. All right, I wanna share with you something that I call the emotional toolbar. And it's three buttons. The first is when you face a problem and you're having those big feelings, pause, press pause, pause and breathe. The second is, after you're calm, hit the rewind button and ask yourself, what just happened? Why did I have such a strong feeling? What's going on? How do other people feel? After you've figured out what happened and you're calm, then you can come up with solutions and go through that rubric of, is it safe? Is it how will it make people feel? Is it fair? Will it work? Then you're ready to press, press, press 
the third button, which is play. Make a choice about what to do, okay? So pause and breathe, rewind, and play. We're gonna use this in looking at some situations coming up. So here's some situations. First, we have Leah and Kevin, okay? And here's the problem. They're both working on separate research projects, okay? And the research project is due in two days, two days. They both need a book from the school library, but there's only one copy of the book and they both need that book. You can see that Leah has the book, right? Kevin wants the book, okay? But she's got it. How do you think they're feeling? What do you think Kevin's thinking? What do you think Leah's thinking? The book isn't due back until next week. So Leah looks like she's checked it out and she doesn't have to technically bring it back till next week, which is past when the report is due. Now, what do you think Kevin's thinking? What do you think Leah's thinking? Lots of different feelings, right? Kevin might be thinking, well, I could probably grab it from her and run and run to my house and then I would have the book and I could use it. Leah's thinking, maybe, maybe she's thinking, I've got the book and you don't have it and I'm going to work on my project, right? It's hard to know. So, first things first, everybody needs to calm down here, okay? Maybe they, they do deep breathing. This poster has a person with their hands on their belly, so they're doing belly breathing, telling themselves, it's okay, I can handle this. Maybe they're counting to five or to 10 or they're counting down, okay? But they're doing something to calm themselves down. Once they calm down, then they can, well, I have take three deep breaths, counting backward, think calm thoughts, talk to yourself, okay. Once they're calm, then, and they've paused and breathe, the next step is, Rewind, right? What happened? Well, they both have a report that's due in two days. They both want the same book. Leah got it first. She checked it out. And after that, then they have to come up with some solutions and press play. Now, what are some possible solutions for this, um, for this situation? You might be thinking, why can't they share it? right? Would that be safe? I think so. How would it make them feel? If they shared it, they both could feel good about using the book and be able to get their reports done. Would it be fair if it's the only book in the library? Most definitely. And would it work? I think so. Okay. But let's back up to before they calm down. If Kevin's thinking, I can grab the book and run, is that safe? No, not really, because um, he, he could could push Leah down. She could get hurt. He could get hurt. How would it make people feel? Well, I think it would make Kevin feel bad eventually that he took the book from her, and she would feel bad because she doesn't have the book, right? Would it be fair? Not really. Would it work? I don't think so, okay? I think it would just be a way for Kevin to get in trouble because Leah would probably go either to her parents or her teacher or the principal, right? If Leah ran with the book and didn't turn it in until the week later, would that be safe? Well, it's certainly safe. How would it make people feel? I think it would make Kev Kevin feel bad, right? Because he needs the book too. And I imagine other kids in their class need it as well. Would it be fair? Not really if there's only one book. And would it work? It might work, but in the end, it hurts relationships. So if they could find a way to share the resource, I think that would be the best solution. Here we have Randall. Randall plays the trumpet in their school band, okay? Randall accidentally bumped into Janet's music stand. Janet's the one in the middle 
Um, and she's looking up at Randall, okay? He bumped into her music stand and knocked her music to the floor. Before he could do anything, say sorry or anything, Janet's amygdala activated, and she stood up, grabbed his music off his stand, wadded it up, and threw it across the room. You can see Randall's holding it. So what was an accident turned into a small was a small problem turned into possibly a big problem because now Randall's amygdala is activated and guess what he wants to do? He wants to crumple her music up, maybe rip it and throw it across the room. This situation is getting worse by the minute, okay? And you can see the other kids around, they're all like, what's going to happen next? Janet's got a little smile on her face like, ha ha, I showed you. I don't even think she realized her amygdala got activated. So, again, everybody in this situation needs to do their deep breathing to calm down and do that emotional ABCs breathing, which is breathing in like you're smelling a flower and breathing out like you're blowing out candles. They could count or think calm thoughts, talk to yourself. Randall's going to have to calm himself down and realize, hey, that, that wasn't okay what she did, um, and I shouldn't do it back to her. So everybody needs to pause and breathe and rewind, right? Janet needs to realize that Randall, it was an accident. He didn't do it on purpose, and he didn't destroy her music. It just fell on the floor. She kind of destroyed his music, right? So once they're calm, I think the best solution is for Janet to press play and apologize, right? Apologize for that. Randall can apologize for knocking her music on the floor. That would be safe. It would make everyone feel better if apologies happened. It would be fair, and I think it would work, okay? But if Randall chose to grab her music, crumple it up, tear it up, throw it across the room, would that be safe? No. How would it make her make others feel? He might feel justified, like, ha, I got you back. But it's going to just make everyone feel bad. Even the other kids, they're going to watch that and think, whoa, these two guys, they can't handle their emotions. Is it fair? Initially, we think, oh, it's fair if I give them what they gave me. But it's not. And will it work? No, I think it causes a bigger problem and it destroys relationships instead of mending them. Okay, last one. <clears throat> Connor and Will don't get along very well. Maybe you've got someone like this in your life. At the bus stop, Connor grabbed Will's poster out of his hand and yells, Let me see it! Will drew the poster for an art contest at school and feels like punching Connor for taking it out of his hands. Okay, so first things first, everybody needs, needs to calm down, right? They either need to do some breathing, they need to do some counting backward, they need to think calm thoughts, talk to themselves. This is way out of hand, okay? Connor shouldn't have grabbed the poster out of Will's hand. He should have asked him, right? But given that he did that, Will needs to be careful not to punch him. His amygdala is saying, fight, fight. So they both need to pause and breathe. Then, hit rewind. What happened? Yeah, Connor took Will's poster out of his hand without permission. So Connor needs to think about apologizing and asking him, hey, can I see your poster? Will needs to calm down and, th and think about, hey, saying an eye message like, when you grabbed that from me, it really made me angry. Would you please give it back? Use an eye message that says, what you just did is not okay. Okay, That's the only way, safe way to solve this problem. The only way to make everyone feel fair and feel good about it. And it's probably the only way to work. Okay, And next time when they're walking out to the bus, they probably, if they don't like each other, they probably need to not walk by each other. They both need to be aware of that and make that not happen. Okay. So here's your instructions. 
if you're a crewmate or an imposter, I still want you to complete the Flipgrid activity attached. I hope you learned some important things today about how to build relationships and not tear them down. See you later.